Uh, well, thank you very much for inviting me to this very interesting meeting. And I'm sure the data <clears throat> that I will be presenting, uh, although it's, it's out there and it's available for everyone to see because it's all, already been published, uh, it does need to be addressed. And uh, Steve, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, if you want, I've got a PowerPoint presentation. I don't know if you have it up there. See. Uh, one one second. Do we have a PowerPoint presentation? Yes, we do. Roxana, just one one second, Roxana. Sorry, we're just uh, getting the presentation. It's all right. I think it's going up there. Okay, we have it now. Okay, we have it now. Okay. Uh, so, well, um, if you can give me the next slide, please. Okay. The the first uh, part, the first two couple of slides, I want to talk about is the mortality and morbidity, uh, general mortality and morbidity. And diabetes mellitus has been, since 19, 2002, the first cause of death in Mexico. And although some of the causes, the fifth, um, some of the causes have been changing, diabetes is still there, and I don't think it's gonna move uh, anywhere in, in, the, in the near future. I, if I can have the next slide, please. And then in terms of morbidity, Diabetes mellitus has been the 10th cause also in the last 10 years. So we have a huge problem of a disease, a chronic disease that is associated basically with obesity and some genetic uh, issues that I'll talk uh, uh, a little more uh, at the end of the presentation. The, um, if, you, if I can have the next slide, please. Uh, the, I'm going to be presenting the data of the main national surveys that have been done since 1999, the National Nutrition Survey, and in 2002, in 2000, I'm sorry, the National Health Survey, plus uh, the National Health and Nutrition Surveys that have been uh, made in 2006 and 2012. So we basically have continuous evaluation of nutrition and health uh, for the last 12 years. And uh, that means we have very hard, I'd say, hard data on what has been happening in the country for the last 12 years. So I can have the next slide. And this, this one's the first, uh, with respect to diabetes mellitus type 2, where we can see that there's been an important increase in the last 12 years in adults of uh, presence of diabetes. and. Uh, uh, data from 2006 to 2012 are really alarming. And this is uh, people who were fined, who were already diagnosed by the time of the survey. However, there's another amount of people who were actually diagnosed during the survey, that they didn't know they had diabetes and they were found diabetic at the time of the survey with the evaluation that was uh, done. So uh, this is just the people that are, already knew they had diabetes and they were not necessarily being controlled. And the other part is the ones that were not controlled because they didn't know they were diabetic. The next slide, please. Uh, this is the prevalence of hypertension. It has also increased uh, mainly in males in the last six years. Uh, but, it, 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 I mean, you can see in the, in the uh, right-hand uh, bars that it is, you know, the increase has been important. We've got more than 30, 31% of adults with hypertension in, in the country in 2012. If I can have the next slide. Mexico um, used to be a country with high rates of undernutrition, particularly infant undernutrition. And uh, yes, if you can see the, these three bars, uh, the first one is talking about weight for age, the second one is talking about height for age, and the third one is weight for height. And if you can see clearly, undernutrition is disappearing. Although it's not totally gone uh, in the country, it is clearly uh, uh, decreased importantly. And uh, uh, on the other hand, overweight and obesity have increased importantly and alarmingly, as uh, everybody really knows. If I can have the next slide. Uh, this is the rates of overweight in adults. Uh, the, the blue bar, uh, the survey from 2000, 
The red bar, 2006, and the orange bar, bar is 2012. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay, I'm sorry, because I, I, some light went off. So um, what we can see here is overweight in uh, numbers has decreased. However, uh, we still have very high numbers of overweight uh, in 2012. Um, of the age groups of 30 and 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and 50 to 59 decreased importantly. Um, and well, that would be a good thing if, if I can have the next slide, we didn't have this increase. So we'll ha what's really happening, we we'll see, is that of course our adults are becoming less overweight, but they're becoming more obese. Uh, the rates of obesity are very high, approximately 40% in the group of 40 to 49 years of age. And um, if you add overweight to obesity, it seems to have plateaued and stopped increasing. But this, this I, I would say that having more obese, heavier adults uh, is, more, is more dangerous than just having them overweight. And that uh, this is uh, something that's really scary. So we're having an increase in the, the, the bad or the worst part in the overweight um, issue in Mexico. We are at present, I think, the first um, uh, in uh, adult obesity and also in, uh, in child obesity. I'm not presenting any data on children, but um, the trends are the same, exactly. We've had an, an, an important increase. And the other thing that's happening is that we're diagnosing type 2 diabetes mellitus in young, uh, young adults, in young children, something that used to be uh, uh, diagnosed mostly in, at um, about 40 years of age. But now we're having them in young adults and adolescents and, uh, and young children. So that's uh, a trend that we don't, we evidently don't like. Uh, what is causing this? Well, I don't think I'm going to say anything new to anybody. If I can have the next slide. Uh, the main, the, there's three main reasons why we're having this obesity and overweight and obesity epidemic in the country, plus the chronic diseases. There has been an important decrease in regular physical activity due to increased urbanization. Um, the, as you surely know, Mexico City is the largest uh, city in the world. We have more, over 25 million people living in an urban spot. And we have several other very large urban um, areas in the north and in the uh, center of the country. So there has been an, a, a very rapid increase in the urbanization, which means uh, a lot of things in terms of diet, in terms of health. The, the population is walking less to work, to school. People are using more motorized transportation, um, either the car or the public transportation, and that means that they're doing less regular, non-programmed exercise. And then also, there has been an de important decrease in leisure exercising spaces, mainly due to insecurity. Uh, the increase in, um, in, in, in delinquency and criminality, it, it joined you know, by the urbanization, has made people not wanting to go to parks, not want, wanting to jog or, or run around. Uh, their, their houses, you know, the, and, and the kids used to go out a lot and play, play football or other sports outside, and that's not uh, allowed anymore in certain areas because of the insecurity. So that's uh, de decreased importantly the uh, physical activity levels in the whole country. And then again, um, the, uh, the second main cause, I would say, is the change in the type of food. First, the uh, presence of uh, increased fast food that Steve was talking about. We have uh, 
a, a very, very large amount of franchises <coughs> that are selling uh, fast food around the country, and you can find them basically in small towns and in big towns and in the city and everywhere. And then um, the, the issue of female labor, well, more women are going out to work, which means that they cannot stay at home, to cook for their families, and that means <coughs> they're increasing of fast foods. And then there's the, the, the ethnicity issue. Mexicans, we have a genetic predisposition for diabetes mellitus, and we also have genetic predisposition for low high density lipoprotein or HDL. Which means, if you know, we, we associate the, this uh, genetic predisposition to uh, the presence of over, or, or an obesity. Of course, we're going into uh, into the chronic disease issue that is affecting our country very importantly. So there's a mixed uh, cause: low uh, physical activity, sed high sedentarism, and uh, the change in the type of food. Uh, Mexico has been always had a um, large availability of fresh fruits and vegetables. However, uh, if the woman's not at home anymore, she's not promoting the intake of fruits and vegetables. And, uh, and, and that's uh, making the, the, the diet evidently changed into a more, what, what's used to call the westernized uh, diet, but I'm, you know, we're part of the Western world and we have that. So um, I would rather say it's more uh, the Americanized uh, type of diet with the burgers and the hot dogs and the fried foods, uh, the fried uh, chicken and all that uh, kind of foods. If I can have the second slide, the next slide, please. And this, of course, has a lot of policy implications. Um, the, 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 the politicians, the government, since the last um, uh, presidential period, and now at this one, has been trying to do things. They've got, they're trying to decrease the availability of what they call the damaging foods. They've eliminated, or they're trying to eliminate uh, junk food and sweetened beverages from the schools. This has been going on for about three years now, and. Um, the industry, in, in this term, uh, have tried to decrease portion sizes, or at, right now they're trying to decrease caloric content of the, these type of foods. And then there's also the, the, the issue of increased cost. And recently, starting from this year, uh, there has been a law that uh, has increased taxes for sweetened beverages, industrialized sweetened beverages, and, um, and junk food. Uh, there's a, a, an increase in taxes, and apparently the government's trying, what, what they're trying to do is uh, uh, make people buy less uh, of these things or get like less uh, caloric intake from these uh, type of foods. Um, however, um, I, well, we'll have to see what happens in the long term in a sense, because uh, there's the lack of the education component, which I think would be uh, more important than, than taxing or increasing costs in the foods, because people are still going to buy, I think, people are still going to go on buying these um, items, even though they're being more expensive. And um, so we, what we really need is these policy changes should be accompanied by improved formal education by the re reduction of illiteracy or low literacy, which would uh, allow people to make better choices in terms of health and, uh, and nutrition, and then also specific health and nutrition education. And of course, these measures, the, the most important problem is that these measures are in the long term. These measures will not change uh, dramatically the effect of overweight and obesity uh, in the in the short term, we're not going to see changes in the next two or three years. I think we're going to be seeing any ch any changes will come around in the next ten years probably if we can uh, add the com the education component with the cost and the taxing component that's already there. And I don't 
really see uh, if the education component is going to be placed in, in where it should be in schools and, and also at the, at the massive uh, communication level with te te television and the radio and all that stuff. So uh, basically, I think that's it. Um, I don't know if you have any questions. Next slide, please. I just, you know, it's, it's a short presentation. <laughs> Thank, you. I hope, Thank you. I hope uh, this helps out in the understanding of what's going on in Mexico, and I'm, I'm available for any questions if you want. Thank you, Thank Roxana. You. Thank you, Roxana. Roxana, could, could I just ask you one um, brief question at this stage? That you know, Me Mexico is sometimes held up as an example of a country which does have an integrated strategy, including those elements that you set out with the taxation on fizzy drinks in, in particular, but also on, uh, on junk food. How, how effective have those measures been? Well, the, me the, the taxing has just started. It starts as this year. The law was just passed at the end of last year, so we really don't know how, um, how it's going to affect the, 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 the overweight and obesity problem plus the economy. The, the Mexican population is very keen on, uh, or they're very used to drinking their, their fizzy beverages. They like it. And I, I'm sorry, but I would bet that the only thing that's going to happen is that they're going to spend more in the same foods. Okay. You know, that the, the okay. culture is not going to change. Thank, thank you, Roxana. Thank you.